All right, what's going on guys? G Dog Casey here, bringing you another Final Fantasy XIV video. This time we are doing the Aram Vale as the White Mage. We are almost out of level up hell in terms of dungeons. We did Dezamil Darkhold last time, and now we're doing Aram Vale. Now, there's some changes here for the White Mage. We have hit level 50, so that being the case, we are able to uh, purchase all of our Ironworks gear. And if we take a quick look here before we, uh, you know, need to be expected to play the game properly. Fully maxed out Ironworks gear. Oh, we lost to DPS. Oh, the Kirby Kirby came in, said for fuck's sakes, and left. And we lost him. But we'll get a new one relatively quick here. Looks like we got a pretty uh, well-geared group here. throw protect on everything and we're gonna do our best here so arm veil is a relatively difficult dungeon uh for new players there's some pretty simple mechanics going on or they're not necessarily simple that dog is distracting the hell out of me she's literally just not stopping barking uh we're gonna let this tank handle this however he wants but yeah we got full ironworks gear uh so we're actually really well geared for this part of the game right now so hopefully things will be relatively simple for us Want to make sure to stay outside of poison puddles and stuff like that. Throw arrow on everything and heal as needed. This guy's taking a decent amount of damage. <laughs> DPS saying, how did I know that a join in progress at zero minutes would be arm bail? Yep. I mean, I don't know why you would just leave as a DPS if you had waited like 20 minutes to queue up for a dungeon. If you get Arm Bail, you do Arm Bail. Who cares? It's not that hard. And if, it, if you do have trouble with it, then maybe you should do it a few more times just so that you, you know, you no longer have trouble with it. There's not one dungeon in the game that I would just quit if I queued into, so... All right, we'll drop some, uh, try not to pull. I pulled, my bad. So we're gonna actually right away take off Cleric's hands. We're gonna throw out some AOE heals here. Uh, we got interrupted, that's pretty terrible. Really gotta get to work here, don't let the tank die. And he's dead, okay, so control four F. Everyone's dead. Can I, oh, that's Isuna, that's not gonna work. No, we're dead. I gotta sprint out of there, and we're dead. Okay, well that room went to shit. Did this happen in my uh, in my tanking run as well? It's a couple uh, couple dungeons in a row now where it might have been my fault that we wiped. I pulled the uh, the frog by mistake. Looks like he's doing okay here. Try to heal him up. Looks like we're good. That was a bit of a mess. Would you call that a wipe? <laughs> it's like a indirect wipe or, or a modified wipe. Something like that. It is a little bit annoying. This room alone is probably the most difficult room that you can do. But you guys are clearly seeing that my, my healing skills are not close to being on par with my tanking skills. I think one of the uh, DPS, he's, he's blocked off. We've got to kill this frog. Got to kill him. He's blocking off the DPS. Oh, stone one, or stone two is what I want to be casting here. Should be able to take him out relatively easy. This is uh, weakness. Yeah, you can't Isuna off weakness. All right. All right, we're going to have a clean run from here on. And for this room, we're going to stick as healing. Uh, actually, uh, the tank did a really good move there. He So when you get targeted by a ranged enemy, 
Uh, he's not going to run over to you unless you leave line of sight. So he hid behind this corner here, and then the Lily of the Veil had to run all the way close to him in order to be able to, uh, to do damage because he was out of line of sight. Very useful trick there that I think I should utilize more often. In fact, uh, embarrassingly enough, I only just recently learned about that. Uh, another thing I should be doing, actually, is putting our buffs back up. I have not done that. He's just running into the boss room. Get our cures going on. We'll throw up our protects again. I haven't actually done much healing recently because I uh, basically... I, I mentioned it in my tanking video, but last weekend I didn't really have time to um, do the healing video because I noticed that I was not level 47, so I wasn't able to get into Arum Veil. Vale. So what I focused on early in the week was I leveled him up to level 50, did a bunch of healing, got him up to level 50, so he's going to be good now, and we're not going to have that problem for a while. Uh, but I should probably talk about the bo boss mechanics here. I think it's relatively simple, but the boss does this, like, debuff that can give you a stack of badness, and in order to get rid of that badness, you have to eat a morble fruit. And I think usually you wait till you're at about two or three stacks before you eat a fruit. So just make sure that you pick up a fruit. Yeah, there's that room-wide uh, debuff there. We'll keep an eye on our team and see when they decide to eat. But overall, we can just do a little bit of damage here. Get another arrow on. And we'll do some uh, healing here. You cannot be Suna off this gold long debuff. Yeah, see, the more stacks you get, the more damage you take as well. So we're just going to keep going. It looks like some of them are eating now. It's pretty healing intensive. I'm going to go ahead and give this guy a cure too. Th this guy being me. The boss is about half dead. I'll wait till I get a third, uh, a third debuff. There we go. Now I'll eat a fruit. And it gets rid of all the buffs. Or all the debuffs. Keep healing here. Try to use our Cure 2 when we can. Basically, you gotta be healing non-stop, but as long as you are healing non-stop and keeping an eye on your debuffs, then you'll be fine. It's not that bad. People just don't like poison mechanics. You know, it's the same thing with, like, Blight Town and Dark Souls. You Nobody really likes it because there's a lot of poison. And the frame rates drop. <laughs> but, anyway. How's the boss doing? He's almost dead. I'm gonna come a little closer. We'll spit out some uh, AoE heals. Down he goes. Still want to eat our fruit here because that debuff, I don't think we'll lose it. Uh, in 30 seconds we'll lose it, but... Might as well eat it now. There you have it. That's the first boss of Arm Veil vale dealt with. Really not too tough, just make sure you keep an eye on your stacks. And uh, eat one when you have two or three. These guys all ate when they had two. I ate when I had three because I was just healing. This room here is filled with uh, seedlings and fruitlings and all sorts of weird stuff. I'm not exactly sure the best way to deal with it, so we'll let the tank just do whatever he wants. I think, I can't remember if it's the fruit that, like, spawn seedlings or if it's the seedlings that spawn fruit. I suppose both are possible, right? A lot of fruit has seeds in them, and a lot of seeds turn into fruit, so I don't know. And you shouldn't expect me to know. So leave me alone. Quit bugging me. Throw out some arrows here just to try to feel like we're being useful. Try not to stand in the gold vial. It's not always exactly easy to see if you're standing in it or not. And these gold vines, uh, relatively simple, but they have the incredibly terrible, well, not terrible, it's actually a really good mechanic, but the terrible, uh, de the terrible debuff of bad breath. You want to make sure you're dodging that shit. If you get hit with, that, with bad breath, you are fucked. It gives you literally every status ailment in the game. 
I think you can probably Isuna them. I've actually never tried. I imagine you can, but you have to do them one at a time, right? So it's still going to take a long time. But we're moving on here. Let's stick to this side. You can't avoid a lot of the fights in this dungeon if you uh, path properly. That's why he's coming all the way over here. I gotta make sure I don't have any of these other enemies on my screen so I don't accidentally tab to them and arrow them and pull them in. I'm pretty sure the tank would not really appreciate that very much. I'm gonna change my hockeys here. I'm using uh, an old school mouse now that does not have any side buttons. And before the cat chewed my mouse wire, uh, I had relied heavily on that those side buttons in order to use my Cure 2 and my, my regen and stuff, but I've had to move them. I'm not the most comfortable with where they are right now. Once again, pulling into the boss room. Interesting. This boss, this uh, tank has some interesting ideas, and I am impressed by them. This way, we'll make absolute sure that we don't pull any other enemies. Alright, let's start doing some damage here. <clears throat> the Ironworks gear, by the way, looks pretty badass. I definitely like it. I already had most of it from my Astrologian, actually. I had to j only buy the uh, weapon. And I, I think I might have had to pick up a couple of these uh, right side accessory items that I, I may have missed out on with my Astrologian. I can't remember. <clears throat> but it feels pretty good to have a full gear set. And we'll be ready to go with this for a long time. Go ahead and give him our regen. This boss, I can't 100% remember what he does. So I guess we'll just have to figure it out. I think he's got big swings. Very similar to the boss that we just did in Halatali Hard Mode with our Paladin. In fact, this might be the first guy who, who has attacks like that. As a healer, we should just be able to stay out of his range. Oh, that's right. Yeah, see, a, a thousand ton swipe, or a hundred ton swipe, whatever. It's all the same. I keep forgetting to uh, focus the boss. It is a good idea. But I don't have a hotkey for it right now. Hundred ton swipe. Boom. Big oh that looks like just like a cleave attack. Let's get back to damaging the boss instead of standing around just watching him. Probably a good idea. I'm keeping an eye on the uh ninja or whoever that is. Looks like somehow our tank is just avoiding to take like any damage. Uh, he just took a little bit of damage there. Oh, he's glowering at me. So we're paralyzed. Okay, well, let's deal with that then. Being paralyzed is not a very good thing for the healer because it'll interrupt your spells. We're just gonna heal for a bit. As soon as that electric damage off of him. That's not a... Is that a ninja? Yeah, it is a ninja. Never mind, I'm stupid. It took me a long time, by the way, to uh, start to recognize these icons on the side. There's still some of them that I don't, actually. Well, there goes the DPS. I'm going to heal up the tank. I'm going to select this guy and do some of that. And come back over here. In case you're not exactly sure what I did there, uh, I have Swift Cast from reaching a certain level as... Wait, did I do that? I, I'm pretty sure I did. I'm pretty sure I rezzed him, didn't I? Swift Cast allows you to cast a spell without the... Uh... Yeah, I think I did res him. You can cast a spell without waiting for the, the cast time, so it's a pretty common practice for the healer to 
get swift cast, which I think you have to hit like level. Oh. You have to hit like level 26, I think, with a Thaumaturge. Should be able to get some uh, solid arrows off here. There's actually quite a bit of enemies, though, so we're gonna focus on just healing here. Tank's gonna be taking a significant amount of damage. We will give him uh, regen as well. Shit, he's taking a lot of damage. So we're gonna use Presence of Mind and Divine Seal. To make sure that we can heal through this here. There we go. Put on our cleric stance and just start throwing out arrows again. Yep, they all have arrow. Take off cleric stance and start healing. Doing pretty good. We had a bit of a hiccup at the start there, but we're starting to find our rhythm here as a healer. And there we go. Nicely done. Pretty sure this guy's not going to pose too much of a problem. Off we go, moving forward. Defeat the Morble Bedkeepers. It's our next mission objective in this dungeon. I think that's like a, a fight where you have two Marlboro-type enemies that cast Bad Breath. And it could be hell if people start getting hit by Bad Breath, but I don't remember the last time that's happened, so I'm sure we won't have too much of an issue with it. And once again, it looks like we have a fairly competent group here. I would say that I'm probably the least competent out of all of them. And if that's the case, then we're doing pretty good. Alright, take off Cleric Stance and start healing. Alright, put Cleric Stance back on and start DPSing. Here's that room with the two gold vines. Yeah, this is a lot of enemies. We're going to turn off Cleric Stance. We're going to focus on healing. Because the tank is going to take a lot of damage. At least for the first little while. I'd say he's pretty good now. We'll give him a regen. Oh, he's already killed everything. Okay. I was going to say, we can try to help with DPS, but I feel like uh, shit might get a little hairy here. Yeah, our ninja's already taking damage quite heavily. So we'll focus on healing here. These guys might get hit by bad breath. Oh! It looks like he got out of it. Okay, let's uh, get a little bit of damage in on this gold vine here. The quicker we can kill this thing, the better. Alright, people are taking damage now. Throw some AoE heals here, just to help out with that ninja. There we go. We'll give this guy a cure 2. And then a cure 1. And then back on to damage mode. And there we go. Yeah, there's the other gold vine. Let's just start damaging this gold vine here. We did pull threat, so we need to make sure we can dodge the uh, bad breath attack that we might get. It's a pretty wide AoE as well, so if you're not ready for it, you can find yourself getting caught by it. But if the tank does a good job and points him away from the party, then that's all you really need to do. Alright, 
Goldmine dead. <clears throat> and we should be heading towards the boss now. I'm greeting everything just for now because I'm actually in the process of trying to make some money. Uh, Jane and I are trying to save up for our item level 250 weapons. And she is so close to getting hers. Okay, that's a lot of damage that's going to be coming in. So let's uh, focus on healing here. Going to give ourselves our buffs as well just to make sure we don't screw this up. When it's this many enemies, you want to make sure that you can heal through it. Looking good. Switch to damage for a bit. Toss out some arrows. We double arrowed that guy by mistake. There we go. And there we go. Back to healing. He's taking some serious damage here, but he'll be fine. Hope he's not worried. And if we're really worried, we can give him some Cure 2s. Actually, there's an ability that we just earned. But you need to be level 50 in order to use it. We're level 49 here. So every dungeon following this one will actually be able to put it to use. Benediction restores all of a target's HP. But it's on like a 5 minute cooldown or something like that. So you use it only when absolutely necessary. And here we go, guys. Moving on to the final boss. It's a big, stinky Marlboro. It's got similar boss mechanics to the first boss, where all these fruits are everywhere. So make sure you stand by a fruit. Stay out of the poison puddles and tank and spank them like normal. Dodge all the AoEs. Make sure you heal your tank. Which I almost forgot to do there for a minute. Got them all healed. Go back to damaging. Let's uh, focus the target as well. I'll try my best to remember to actually properly do that. Okay, whoa, big damage here coming in on the ninja. Heal him up. Leave him with a uh, regen. So we're getting stacks again. And they do damage over time. And the more stacks you get, the more damage it is. And you have to eat a fruit in order to debuff it or to dispel it. I got a fruit right here. I think it, it's this boss where you wait until you get to about three. Um, I don't want to target the fruit. All right, hold on. We're going back to healing here because more damage is coming in. I have Cleric Stance on. Take that off. We lost our ninja once again. Make sure the tank doesn't die. Make sure we don't get hit by bad breath. We'll cast our buffs here. And we will target him. Control 4 and then Control F to res him. I turned on Cleric Stance like an idiot. Now I gotta wait five seconds. Alright, turn off Cleric Stance. Heal up our ninja. There we go. We have only two debuffs right now, so we're not necessarily dying for a fruit. Now we have three, so we probably are. So let's heal myself here. There's a fruit right there. I'll go grab it. Alright, quickly heal the tank. Didn't realize he was gonna be taking so much damage there. Give him some Cure 2s. Some of them are free. Aw, oh, man. See, like, this is relatively simple for all of you professional healers out there. But for someone like me, not quite a professional, it, it gets pretty hectic. But the thing is, like, the hectic healing is, it's a lot of fun in a really interesting way. Like, it, it's so different than tanking or even than DPSing, obviously. But for some reason, it's just a lot of fun. Alright, did I not eat a fruit or something? There we go. Got rid of those burrs. Our ninja's dying again. Try to cure this guy as best we can. My divine steel is off cooldown, so why don't we just use that? Also, my hotkeys are definitely not set up in an optimal manner either. Uh, you know, like con control Q, shift Q, and Q. Oh shit! For all my normal he healing attacks and or healing abilities and stuff like that, is not quite optimal. So. I'll have to figure something out in the meantime while I wait to uh, be able to afford a better mouse. But there you have it, guys. That is the Aram Veil from the healer's perspective. GG team. Uh, GG team. And
and there you go. So it is an annoying dungeon, but if you stick through it, it's really not that difficult. Granted, we had a great team, as usual. The uh, tanks did a great job. Sometimes you'll have tanks that don't do a great job, so that makes it a little bit more, uh, you know, frustrating. And, and I don't blame you if you're frustrated by it, but... That said, you only have to do it once unless you're starting a YouTube series in which case in which you're going through all the dungeons of every class and then at that point you'll have to do it several more times, granted, but it's your own stupid fault for doing that, right? But anyway guys, that's going to do it. Hope you enjoyed as usual. The healer is ready to roll for all of these following dungeons now. All of these level 50 dungeons, they're going to carry them right through to level 60, I'm hoping. I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping. There's quite a few dungeons that we can go through here, and I imagine we'll be pretty close to level 60 by the time we get through them all. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Look at this really cool... <laughs> it's like the smallest thing. But the Ironworks gear, all the weapons. Like, I remember the Paladin one would, like, open up like that, and, like, the, sh the sword would come out of it. Anyway, guys, that's gonna do it. See you later. Bye.